So in this video, I want to talk about Ohm's law. Voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. So let's say we have this circuit with this battery and this resistor. So what are batteries? What do batteries do? This battery has a spontaneous reaction that makes this lead high in electric potential, high in positiveness, and it makes this lead low in electric potential, low in positiveness, more on the negative side. So these batteries create these differences in electric potential. They create these voltages, these differences in electric potential. So let's say we have a 10 volt battery. So now we know that it's, it's made these differences in electric potential. So now that this battery has created these differences, differences in electric potential, what's going to happen? Well, we know these negatively charged electrons are going to want to flow towards the positive node. Because again, these negative charged electrons are going to want to flow to regions of higher electric potential. If this region is higher in positiveness, then this negatively charged electron is going to want to flow. So these voltages create currents. They create these flows of electrons, these currents. And that's what voltages do. The, and these voltages affect the current. However, if we have this 10 volt battery, if we have this, this, volt, this 10 volt battery, how much current will we have? How many electrons will flow per second? What will be the magnitude of this current? Well, we can determine that using Ohm's law. If we know the voltage of a battery, we can determine the current as long as we know the resistance. So in this situation, we know the voltage is 10 volts. And something important to realize is that's constant. If you go to the battery, uh, the, the grocery store, and you buy a 10-volt battery, then you know it's a 10-volt battery. That's constant. If it's a 10-volt battery, it's a 10-volt battery, and that's not changing. This battery is constantly supplying a, 10, a difference of 10 volts as long as the battery is working. But again, so, so voltage is constant. So this V term is constant. So now that we know this V term is constant for when using this uh, application of, of Ohm's law, then we know the current, we know the relationship between the current and the resistance. Because we know this, this side is constant at 10 volts. We know this, this is constant. So therefore, if this side of the equation is constant, then we know the higher the resistance, the lower the current for this side to still equal 10 volts. And also, if we have a low resistance, then we must have a high current for this side to still equal 10 volts. So what do I mean? So again, let's say we have this 10 volt battery. And let's say we have a very strong resistance. Let's say we have a very large, this resistor is a very strong resistance of 10 ohms. Then if we have this very large resistance, we're going to have a very small baby current. Because again, even though this voltage creates a current, if we have a very large resistance that's resisting that current because we have such a strong resistance, we're going to have a very little current. And that's how these currents and resistances are related. So in this situation, when we have this 10 ohm battery with this 10 volt battery, uh, this, uh, this 10 ohm resistor with this 10 volt battery, we can solve the current. And we could see the current in this, with the 10 ohm battery, the current, we could use some algebra, we would get one amp. And that's the units of current. So, so now we know if we have a high resistance, we would have a low current for this side to still equal 10. So therefore, the stronger the resistor, the smaller the current. So with this resistor, we would get a current of 1 amp. However, now, now let's say we physically replaced this resistor. Let's say we physically replace, replace this resistor with a new resistor. Now let's say we have a new resistor that's very weak in resistance. Now, now we have a very weak resistor, a very little resistor that's very weak in resistance. Now let's say this new resistor has one ohm of a resistance, so a very weak resistance. What should we expect for the current? Well, if we have a very weak resistance, we would have a very large and monstrous current because we have such, a, such little resistance resisting that current. So if we have a little resistor, we would have a very large current. Because again, if we had a small resistor, we would have a large current for this side to still equal 10. So in this situation, what would the current be? Well, again, we know the voltage is constant. That's that, that This battery is a 10-volt battery, so that's not changing. But now we physically replaced the resistor. We got rid of the original resistor. We physically replaced it, and we replaced it with this new weak resistor. So now we have a resistor of 1 ohms. So in this situation, we would get a current of 10 amps. We could just use some algebra, and we would see with a 1 ohm resistor, we would have a current of 10 amps. So again, we, as we made a lower resistance, the weaker the resistance, the larger the current. 
the weaker the resistance, we get a larger current. And that's the essence of this Ohm's law, and you need to understand that relationship. But there are a couple things you need to realize. One mistake that people make with this Ohm's law is they think, okay, if we were to, let's say we had this resistor and we were to replace this battery with a larger, with a, with a larger voltage battery. So we got rid of this battery, we, we added a larger voltage battery, so therefore we increased the voltage. Then mathematically, we would see we would increase the resistance, right? Well, no, that's not true because remember, this resistance is constant. If we have a resistor that's a 1 ohm resistor, then it's a 1 ohm resistor and that's not changing. That's due to its physical properties based on the material, based on the material based on, and based on the 3D geometry dimensions, based on the, the thickness and the length. Those physical properties determine the resistance. So that's not changing. The, if we have a certain resistance, that's constant and that's not changing. The only way to change the resistance of the circuit is to change the resistor, to physically remove this resistor and to add a new resistor. That's the only way we can change the resistance of this, this Ohm's law. And again, so the key points is that this voltage, as long as we have a 10 volt battery, it's a 10 volt battery and that's constant. And this resistance is also constant. It, it depends on the 3D geometry and, and, and the physical nature, well, what material this is. So, so that's also constant, that doesn't change. So, so it's important to realize those relationships with this Ohm's law. But again, the key point is that voltages create currents. These voltage differences create these currents. And again, the current will depend on the resistor, the resistance of the circuit.